I'm going to talk to you about timber in buildings, structural timbers in particular, and what can go wrong when they get damp. The truth about timber is that it's a fantastic building material. And if it's kept dry, it will last forever really. You know, it doesn't really decay. It's when it gets wet, and it can get wet for lots of reasons in a building. It can be simply that there's a tap leak, you know, we've got a leak in the, in the heating system or something, but that's usually detected quickly. What tends not to be spotted early is in moisture in a wall. So if there's rising damp, for instance, or if there are uh, high path levels or a bridged cavity, um, there may be a lot of salts in a wall uh, causing hygroscopic moisture. Uh, there may be poor pointing on the, say, the southwestern elevation where the driving rain comes in. And so once a wall gets wet in depth, it tends to stay damp for a long time. It takes a long time to dry out. And those are exactly the conditions where any wood in contact with or within that wall will reach an equilibrium because timber is a hygroscopic material. It will absorb moisture. Um, so its moisture content will rise and fall with the building. Um, one example is subfloor voids. If there's no subfloor ventilation, moisture from the house actually rather than from the ground, you know, from you and me cooking and washing, etc. Those excited water vapor molecules are dashing around in the air. They're, they're under slight pressure. Um, we call that vapor pressure. And that moisture will go down through the floor into the floor void where it's a lot colder. And what happens then is the relative humidity rises because it's relative to temperature and cold air doesn't support as much water vapor as warm air does. So now we've got the same amount of water vapor under the floor as above the floor, but below the floor, we've got a higher relative humidity. And so timbers will rot. And this is how it happens. I'll just show you. This is a floor joist, which I've taken from a, um, a property we've worked on, and it's suffering from dry rot. You can see the nails there that used to hold the floorboards on it, and it's shaped like a banana, you know. Uh, we can see that. Um, all this fungus here is mycelium, as we'll call it, which is produced by dry rot as part of its growth. It's very dry now, but when it was under the floor, it had a moisture content of around 28-30%, which is ample for, for rot to uh, flourish in timber. So that's dry rot. There's a bit of what we call a fruiting body. If you get a report and it mentions a fruiting body, this one's quite dry now, so it's not as orange and rusty coloured as it normally would be. But you can sort of see that rough sort of poor texture that it had. It will have been a bit thicker when it was alive and kicking. But basically, this produces the spores which allow the fungus to spread by other means. It also spreads by invasive spread. It grows across timber and through uh, porous masonry uh, behind plaster. So it's quite an invasive thing. Don't be too afraid of dry rot though, this is a bad case. Um, dry rot can cause serious problems, but remember all those problems are actually related to moisture. And so the key thing to do when there's any dry rot in a building is look at the moisture source. Identify the moisture source and deal with that, whether it's poor subfloor ventilation, rising damp, penetrating damp, or a combination of them all. Attack that, dry the building out, and the rot will die. Wet rot's very similar, uh, does just as much damage. In fact, statistically, wet rot is more common, so it does a lot more damage overall than dry rot does. You're unlikely to get dry rot in a house, so don't worry too much about that. Um, where dry rot's more common is when moisture contents are very high. So for example, churches, uh, older buildings with valley gutters and things, which can often remain blocked for a long time before it's noticed, and you'll get a lot of water. And dry rot, despite its name, loves water. It likes a lot of water. Wet rot, or well, most wet rots, because there are several wet rots, they prefer um, slightly less moisture. There are ones that are greedy for, for more, but most of them will thrive in a slightly lower moisture content, especially the brown wet rots. Brown wet rots tend to, um, like uh, Coniophyra putania, will cause rots under floors simply due to poor ventilation. Woodworm, another problem of properties, is a piece of plywood which has been destroyed virtually by common furniture beetle. Um, common furniture beetle is a pest of the forest, remember. In fact, all rots and, and, and insects are really pests of the forest. So when they infest timber in your house, they've made a big mistake when you think about it. Um, they've infested timber that's a lot drier than the timber that they evolved to eat. Because they evolved on the forest floor under a pile of dead leaves where the moisture content of the timber is very high. Not only is the moisture content high, as a result of that, the 
biological decay is higher. You've got a lot of other funguses eating the wood and so all of them working together destroy the wood very quickly. In a property, particularly a centrally heated property, um, infestation will still grow um, but it's slower. Okay, so it takes a long time to get to this stage. So normally you'll find just a few holes. It's important to identify whether they're active or not and our surveyors can do that for you in most cases. Uh, sometimes it might be necessary to just monitor it. Uh, occasionally some chemical treatment is um, advisable and if it is we'll tell you um, and we'll recommend the most appropriate treatment for that and the safest treatment we can use. There are other infestations which we need to know about and this is one of my favourites actually which is um, wood boring weevil. Now wood boring weevil is an insect which we class as a class B infestation. What we mean by that is it's a secondary infestation. You will never get wood boring weevil in dry wood. It doesn't happen. So it's not, for instance, going to spread from this piece of damp floorboard um, to your desk, desk in the office or to some timber cladding or anything like that. It just doesn't happen. It's only there because we've got timber at a high moisture content which is beginning to decay. So basically, as long as we find the moisture, and deal with the decay problem, the weevil will take care of itself. There's never a need to spray an insecticide on a wood boring weevil infestation. But unfortunately we do come across many cases where this has been recommended. Uh, so it's important to note that you do not treat wood boring weevil in an insecticide, you attack the damp issue and cure that. Woodworm and wet rot can cause all sorts of issues um, and this is another type of rot. This is a wet rot but this is a white rot and we call it a white rot because it's left the timber with a fairly bleached appearance. This group of rots are very clever actually, they're a little bit more advanced in that what they're able to do is feed off the cellulose in the wood um, which is exactly what um, the, the, the brown rots do but in addition they feed off the lignin as well which removes the brown colour and you end up with this bleachy appearance to the timber. Okay? But the other thing to look for is if we look at the surface and I rub it with my thumb, it's almost got a texture like rubbing tobacco. It's, it's lost everything. I can grind it virtually down to dust. So it's got no tensile strength because it's lost the long cellulose chains, molecular chains that give wood the tensile strength. They've gone. But in addition to that, it's also lost the lignin. So everything's been metabolised by the rot and you're left with this. It's very common in joinery, external joinery. So you'll often find this in, in window frames, door frames, that kind of thing. And in that case, a builder can just replace it. You don't need a specialist in um, only at identification stage. Brown rots, like dry rot for instance, that's a brown rot. They cause this characteristic cracking you see it's cross grain cracking sometimes we refer to it as cuboidal cracking um, and that's because it's just the cellulose being metabolized so when the cellulose chains those long chains that I told you about that give the the wood its, ten, its tensile longitudinal strength when they're broken down it cracks across the grain so we know straight away we're dealing with that Cuboidal cracking tends to be a bit more severe with dry rot, which is what this is. Uh, with wet rots, it's, it's not often as, as, uh, as pronounced, um, but certainly the, the two are in the same family. Our surveyors are trained to identify the rot or the infestation properly. Moreover, they will always then proceed to find out where the moisture source is whether it's ventilation, penetrating damp, rising damp, whatever, we need to identify that because that's the holistic view. We need to look at the whole property as one and every building is different. Its history is different, previous work that may have been done will be different and that needs to be taken into account. So it's not unusual for our surveyor to ask a client questions, you know, if there's been any changes to the building recently, things like that. Then we can start looking at treatment and chemical treatment is the last thing we look at. The first thing we look at is dealing with the damp. We may have to lower path levels, we may have to put more air bricks in, uh, we may need to do some building repairs or perhaps recommend um, someone else if you need a roofer or something like that. We'll recommend a roofing contractor, we may recommend a small builder to you. We'll certainly help you find one if you ask us, we, can, we know quite a few of them. Um, and once you've dealt with that, then we can look at whether treatment is required. Um, sometimes it is if we've got a severe problem, for instance with dry rot, um, 
it may take months or even years to fully dry out. So some preservative treatment using approved HSC, approved chemicals is sensible and of course all our operators are trained and qualified to do that safely. Woodworm, that's again can be treated on site. Treatment is probably required in 50% of the infestations we look at. Um, generally speaking, um, infestations have been treated before, so that rules out some of them. Um, or they can simply die out naturally, because as I said at the beginning, um, timbers are not ideal in, in buildings for woodworm unless there's a damp source. I hope this has been a useful talk on timber and damp. Uh, do give us a call if you want any further advice. You'll find the girls in the office know their stuff as well because they attend the same technical courses that technicians and surveyors do. And we would hope that you would ask us these questions or perhaps drop us an email.